everyone. In my last video, we talked about peach cut flowers helping us out in the cut flower garden, saving us time and space just due to the type of color that it is. I'm all about making my life easier as a farmer florist. So today I want to talk about another group of flowers that makes cut flower gardening a lot more easy and enjoyable for me. And that is what I like to call gap flowers. So I'm just out here in my perennial cutting garden. I've been doing some garden work today. One of the perks about living in the mild coastal Pacific Northwest is that I can do gardening pretty much through the whole year in between bouts of rain. Now I know it doesn't look like a lot right now, but this is actually one of my favorite spots on the farm. And when it's blooming, it is so beautiful. But this garden also serves a very valuable purpose. And that's because a lot of the plants in here serve as my spring gap flowers. Gap flowers are what I like to call flowers that fill a sort of deficit in the blooming period in the spring, sort of at the tail end of as tulips are finishing off and before the summer annuals really get going like dahlias, zinnias and cosmos. When I first started a cut flower garden, I really struggled to fill that time period. I just didn't have enough to work with and that's where this garden comes in. The mixture of perennials, shrubs, and naturalizing bulbs really helped me to get through that season. So today I want to go with you through the gap season. In my climate, that's roughly mid-May to the end of June. I'll be sharing some examples of different plants that you can add to your cut flower garden and flower fields that will help you flow through the season a little easier and give you a lot more to work with. Just to give you a feel for it, I'm going to try to share in the order of when things bloom. And we'll also be looking at bouquet examples that I produced on my farm, just to give you a fuller idea of what's blooming around the same time. Just keep in mind that over the entire season, there's going to be some overlap as some things start to bloom, other things start to fade. And that's just part of the beauty of growing seasonally in the garden. One of my favorite things about incorporating perennials into a cutting garden plan is that perennials are generally low maintenance, fuss free, and they come back reliably year after year. But you will be seeing a sprinkling of annuals that flower reliably in this time period for me as well, as long as they are fall sown or started indoors in the winter. Now I can't possibly cover every single flower that you might spot in this video. So if you see any that you have questions about, please, as always, feel free to drop me a comment and I'll get back to you. All right, let's situate ourselves exactly where we're at in this point in the growing season. So the daffodils and the hyacinths, we've already seen those. And we've had a good run on our tulips. They've been blooming for about five weeks. So we're just on the tail end of our late tulips. There's a few late parrot varieties that are coming through now. And this is where we're going to start. And for me, for my farm, this is right around Mother's Day most years. So mid-May. So if the weather cooperates for Mother's Day, to pair with my tulips, some of which have been in storage for a few weeks, we'll be seeing things like the very first purple sensation allium. If you've got these in a couple of different locations in your garden, you can extend the bloom period on these guys. And I would say this is my most reliable allium for coming back every year. Also, the stem length is incredible on these. So this dainty little blue flower here, this is Brunnera. If you have border areas that are shaded in your garden, plant a bunch of Brunnera. It's such a beautiful, sweet filler. It makes a great little cut flower. And another great little filler here is Crane's Bill Geranium. For those of you that are really interested in fragrant flowers, this is a great one. It has a really beautiful, fresh, clean scent. And before I get any further, I just want to rewind for one quick second and mention Lenten Rose Hellebores. So Lenten Rose Hellebores are varieties that flower a little later. Now they've already been around for a while. They've been blooming for a while but hellebores have amazing staying power. And they actually have a longer lasting vase life also if we let them ripen a little bit. So the initial blooms are the color that they are. I grow a lot of purple and red ones. So they're going out in bouquets for a few weeks, but I'll even use them when they turn green because they're a beautiful filler. So this is an amazing plant for me actually. It grows well in the shade and I use it at all stages. And we're seeing a perennial bachelor button here that is just getting started. These ones should be harvested when the flower is still closed. 
We're also seeing the first anemones here. Anemones are a great one because they'll continue flowering for a few weeks. I overwinter mine in my perennial garden, and just as a reminder, I'm zone 8B. I just find the stem length and the bloom quality is incomparable doing that compared to starting them as annuals. We are also seeing the earliest columbines. Columbines are so rewarding in the spring in a cut flower garden, and unfortunately, they're a little bit boring through the rest of the year. But if you can afford some space for columbines, I would recommend having a few different varieties. There's a range in the bloom timing on columbine, so the more different varieties you have, the more you can hit those different parts of the spring. And we'll be seeing a few different columbines in this video as well, so I'll be sharing the names of the ones that I know. All right, motoring right along here. We're going into late May now and we're seeing some poppies. So this is an oriental poppy. Now, if you'd like something kind of fun and funky in your gardens, you might wanna consider poppies. These are really fun if you're doing event work or even if you just want something that's a little bit different for in your home. They have these amazing, huge crinkly flowers. And something cool about poppies is that you actually harvest them when they're closed. You wanna get them before they're open at cracking stage. And if you get them like this, you'll be able to have a better vase life. Here's another geranium. This geranium is an all-star. It's a purple cranesville geranium. I harvest this one at all stages because when the flowers have ripened and the petals have fallen off, it actually leaves a really beautiful pod behind. Around this time, my earliest peony is starting. Peonies might be considered one of the ultimate gap flowers. If you get different varieties, you'll be able to extend your flowering window by a few weeks. But the other great thing about peonies is that you can store them in the fridge or the cooler for several weeks. If you're curious about how to dry store them in your fridge, check out this video that I did last spring. And this is Spirea. This is a spectacular flowering shrub. It's quick growing and it's really great addition to bouquets this time of year. And another one of my favorite fillers is Sweet Rocket. This one is a biannual. I really love this one because it has a beautiful fragrance that's a lot like phlox. And one more very special filler for this time of year is Estrantia. You can get this one in several colors. It grows well in part shade, which is a bonus if you've got any sort of shady areas and you're looking to get production out of them. And the trick with this one is if you do a clean harvest of the first flush of flowers, the plant will actually send a second flush of flowers for you. And two annuals we're seeing right now are Chantilly Snaps, and bachelor buttons. So Chantilly snaps are in the group one of snapdragons. Group one snapdragons perform best in shorter days and cooler temperatures, so they're really good for this time of year. And if you've grown bachelor buttons, you'll probably relate to the fact that I have a love-hate relationship with bachelor buttons. They are great if you're looking for some very early flowering, but they're a pain to work with and keep up with in the garden. And once other things get going, I usually rip these out. So we've just covered about two to three weeks of time in my area, and now we're moving into June for my zone. June is when we're gonna see some fun new shapes and structural flowers. These guys are Dutch irises. I find these ones really fun to deal with in the cut flower garden. The trick with these irises is that they basically have to be harvested the moment that you see a tiny bit of color on the tip of the bud. The cool thing about them is that they can be stored dry in the fridge for a couple of weeks. We're also seeing lupins coming in now. These are gallery mix lupins. Lupins self sow really easily. So if you don't want that to happen, make sure you don't let the flower go to the seed pod, which actually happens quite quickly. We've got a couple of my favorite flowering vines clematis, and most especially honeysuckle. I use honeysuckle a lot. It's a woody stem, so it benefits from a small slit up into the stem and then a treatment with quick dip. And we're seeing the start of sweet peas. Some of these have overwintered in my hoop house. Some of them have been sowed indoors and gotten out early. And the great thing about sweet peas is that they have a long flowering window. For me, they actually can flower right through the entire summer. And this is Al Camilla or Ladies Mantle, one of my all time favorite perennials, and I don't think this one ever gets enough attention. These blooms will hold on this plant for a while, and if you plant in different climate zones within your garden, you'll get a staggered harvest as well. 
The texture is amazing on these and the chartreuse green color goes with basically everything. And this is my latest Columbine. So this is from the McKenna's Giant series. This is a really good one. I'd highly recommend this one. It has the largest flower of any of my Columbines and it grows a little bit more upright as well. And foxgloves are coming along right now. This is a wild foxglove. But another one that I like to grow is the Dalmatian Hybrid series. It's a first year flowering hybrid and it comes in some delicious colors like creams and apricots. And now we're getting into one of my garden stars, the delphinium. If you want height and drama in your designs, you can't really beat a delphinium. They bring such a great scale and a sense of luxury to bouquets. So here we've got another beautiful spring flowering shrub. This is physocarpus or nine bark. And this is a purple variety that I have. Nine bark is wonderful because it also has beautiful foliage and the seed pods are beautiful. So this is one that I'm harvesting and using throughout the year. You can see that at this point, the gardens are giving a lot of textural elements. It's very frothy and springy. There are those McKenna's giant columbines again. And here they're hanging out with yellow loose strife. Yellow loose strife can be rather invasive in the garden. So just be careful if you're going to plant that one. But it's an incredibly long lasting cup flower. I just added Silene Blushing Lanterns last year, so I think this is the only photo that I have. It's really fun. I'm excited to have more to work with this year. This one's invasive in the garden, so you might want to plant this one in a pot. This is Biplorum. This is a cool, hardy annual. Again, we're seeing this lovely chartreuse green that is super versatile. It also brings really great movement and freshness to bouquets. And another annual happening right now is Larkspur. I love the texture of Larkspur when it's fresh in bouquets, but this is also a really handy one to grow if you like drying flowers. This one dries really well and it comes in some different colors as well. And we've got more alliums. I grow roughly eight to 10 different alliums. They all have a different bloom period, so they really extend my season through. They bring such interest and focal to design work. They're really helpful. And this little blue allium is Allium azureum. And this is a white allium that I grow. It's Allium nigrum. And now we've gotten down to mid to late June and I'm seeing my first scabiosa. This is a perennial scabiosa, blue fama. This is such a very cool color. If you're not sure how to work this particular color into your designs, one of my favorite combinations is with pinks. And the trick with scabiosa is to just never let them go to seed. They need to be harvested frequently and consistently, and then they will keep blooming for a long period of time. I finished off the month of June with this bouquet last year, so the peonies in this one were stored. And this one has still a very spring-like feel, but if you look very closely, you start to see little bits of summer sneaking in, like the hare's tail grass. And then from here, we start to move into the next phase of flowering. We're getting into July, and we're moving into our actual summer flowers. My work table is showing a lot of summer here. My first dahlias have been coming in. And there's a beautiful overlap here with some spring showing up as well, but the bouquets are starting to look very summery at this point. If you're curious what comes next, check out my video on what's blooming in July. It's from just this last spring. And in it, I do a tour of my perennial gardens, my hoop houses, and my production field as well. I hope that through this video, you've found some new ideas for things that you can add to your own spring gardens to fill some of the gaps. I love hearing from you. So if you have any questions or comments, please drop them in the comments and I'll get back to you. And if this video was helpful to you, if you could like it, and if you could subscribe to my channel, I'm still trying to build my channel and it would be super helpful to me. Thank you so much and see you next time.